Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> William Bendix. Nobody can act up to par with a nasty cold. I check my cold distress the fast way with four-way cold tablets. Yes, tests of four leading cold tablets proved four-way fastest acting of all. Amazing four-way starts in minutes to relieve aches, pains, headache, reduce fever, calm, upset stomach, also overcomes irregularity. Four-way is the fast way to relieve those cold miseries. Then you feel better quickly. Four-way cold tablets, only 29 and 59 cents. And now a word about another fine product of Grove Laboratories. To get rid of embarrassing dandruff in three minutes, change to Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo. Three minutes with Fitch regularly is guaranteed to keep unsightly dandruff away forever. Apply Fitch before wetting hair. Rub in one minute. Add water, lather one minute. Then rinse one minute. Every trace of dandruff goes down the drain. Three minutes with Fitch and embarrassing dandruff gone. At the same time, Fitch can brighten hair up to 35%. Get Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo today. Most people think of Dodge City here in the 1870s as a wild, lawless town. Swamped with exciting women and strong, daring men. And then they picture as fighters, the kind who stand up for almost no reason at all and gun each other down with as little regard for their own lives as they have for their opponents. Men whose courage is as raw and harsh as the prairies it's bred on. Well, this is the picture, but uh, it isn't quite complete. We've got our share of cowards, too. Like the one whose work I ran into the night I found a note on my door. said, come up to Doc Adams' office as fast as I could. Doc, come back room, Mr. Dillon. What's the trouble, Chester? Well, he's got Jack Massey in there. Jack Massey? You know, that cowboy who looks you up whenever he comes to town, you remember him? He always comes into the office and... Sat around and talk. Oh, yeah, the red-headed fellow, you mean. What's he doing up here? What's wrong? Here's Doc. You better ask him. Hello, Matt. Doc? Well, he's dead. Oh, that poor fellow. As soon as I saw him, I knew he couldn't make it. Not with a hole like that. Well, what happened, Doc? Somebody shot him, Matt. Oh? We don't know. I, I was coming down the street, Mr. Young, and I... Heard a shot, and I run in, found him laying there on the floor, right where he fell out of the chair. Fell out of what chair? Y- yours. Mine? Yes, sir, down in the office. He was waiting for you, I guess, and somebody must have sneaked in the back way and shot him. But why? He was shot in the back. So? Well, he was sitting in your chair, and we noticed he was wearing a hat, just like the one you wear. And also, he's about the same size as you. Somebody's out to kill you, Matt. To kill you the easy way. Yeah, thanks. Well, 
What brings you into the Long Branch this time of night? I was just looking around there. There are a lot of men at the bar over there. Think you can pick him out? What? The man who thought he shot you tonight. Oh. News travels fast, huh? I heard somebody was after you two days ago. You did? I figured it's a talk. Didn't anybody tell you about it? Well, I haven't been around much the last couple of days, Kitty. But even so, it isn't the kind of talk people feel easy about passing on. To me, that is, anyway. I guess not. You know who started it? Mm -hmm. Who? He did. Who's he? Coming this way. Well, I said Evie. What's he doing in Dodge? He's got to drop around more often, Matt. He's been banking Farrell here three or four days now. But did Sam hire him? Yeah. He's been doing fine, too. Evie always was a smart gambler. Well, hello, Marshal. Miss Kitty. Ed. Hello, Evie. Uh, do you mind if I sit down? No, oh, go ahead. Thanks. Um, uh, I've been meaning to come to see you, Marshal. Oh, is that so? Yeah, I, uh, I heard about the shooting tonight. It seems most everybody has. I know something about it, Marshal. Would you like to hear it? Now, tell me. Well, a couple of nights ago, I went out back to breathe a little fresh air. I was standing out there in the dark around the corner in the alley. And uh, I heard a couple of men come out. They couldn't see me. I couldn't see them. But I heard one of them tell the other he was going to shoot Marshal Dillon. Shoot him any way he could. That's all you heard? Oh, they said something else, but uh, I couldn't understand it. Then they went back in. Uh Uh-huh. You, uh, you got no idea who it was. I didn't dare take a look, Marshal. It would have killed me, sure. You're a little late telling me this, aren't you, Evie? I don't exactly owe you any favors, Marshal. Why did you bother to tell me at all? I don't like killing, that's why. I hate killing. Well, I've I've told you everything I know, Marshal. I'll be going now. (laughs) Night, Kitty. What's that all about, Matt? What's between you and Evie? Well, I knew him up in Santa Fe one time, Kitty. He was bullying a man. And I showed him up to be a coward. A lot of people witnessed it, and uh, Evie never forgave me. But well, maybe his story's a lie. Maybe he's the one who did the shooting tonight. I don't think Ed Evie has the guts to shoot a man. Even in the back. Who is this, then? Haven't you any idea? No. There are a lot of men who'd like to see me dead, Kitty. I know. I'm always willing to take my chances with anybody who will face me. It's the man who shoots out of the dark I'm afraid of. Chevy, Plymouth, or Nash Rambler, what's your best buy for 59? How do they really compare in size, horsepower, comfort, and economy? Read the facts about every 59 car in the January Popular Science magazine, the giant 256-page new car issue. It's now at your newsstand at a special new reader's introductory price of only 25 cents instead of 35 cents. Can the big three automakers stop the swing to the little foreign cars? Has Detroit sacrificed safety for styling? Can your family get more pleasure and value from a station wagon? Are today's automobile brakes really able to handle today's horsepower? January Popular Science brings you the inside facts, plus a gold mine of new money-saving ideas. Pick up your sample copy of January Popular Science at the Get Acquainted Price. Look for the big yellow band on the bright blue cover. Remember, this month you get Popular Science, the same magazine that regularly costs 35 cents for only 25 cents. At your newsstand today, while the supply lasts, Popular Science Magazine. Nobody wants to die. But it's even worse without a chance to fight back. 
That's what always made me feel especially bad about a man who broke his neck falling out of a saddle or who maybe disappeared in front of a stampede of buffalo. Or who, like Jack Massey, sitting at my desk, had to take a bullet in the back. No, that's not dying. That's being slaughtered like a hog in a pen. It robs a man of everything he's lived for. Well, sir, I tell you, if I was in your boots, Mr. Jones, I'd hide me out onto the prairie for a spell. You would, huh? You bet I would. Out there, you can see a man coming a mile off. You know, he wouldn't like that, Chester. Oh, I guess you're right. He wouldn't never follow you out into open, not him. Or them. You think there might be more than one? It might be. Well, not, not Mr. Jones. Why don't you hire some men to hang around as sort of a bodyguard for you? Then nobody wouldn't dare try ambush. The sooner they try, the better, Chester. Get it over with one way or the other. Well, I wish I was as cool about it as you. I'm not cool, Chester. I'm mad. Well, you sure got a funny way of showing it. Now, if I was mad, I'd be hopping around like a bong with a burr under its tail. I'd be a swanting and a slurring of foam on my mouth and blood. Look out. He's up there now. Yeah, I'm going after him. Well, I'm going with you. Oh, you stay here. Start shooting, mister. Just start shooting while you got a chance. I sure will. I'll shoot you. I'll shoot you good. That's what I'm going to do, shoot you. All right, drop the gun. <laughs> He had a gun in his hand. He's drunk, Chester. You knock him out? I hit him hard enough. Come on, let's get him up to docks. We'll sober him up and find out what this is all about. Here's your coffee. Don't put that cup down yet, fella. Not before you drink every drop of coffee in it. I'm drowning in coffee, Doc. Come on, drink it. No more, Doc. No, I'm sober now. Yeah. Uh, Matt? You can talk straight enough now. It's about time. All right, mister. What's your name? Matt. Matt Swan. But I didn't mean nothing, Marshal. I didn't know what I was doing. Honest, I didn't. And I'll tell you, you were trying to kill me, weren't you? Watch it! No! Don't, don't hit me. Please don't hit me. Yeah. You're a real coward, aren't you, Swan? Even to shoot me in the back, you had to take on a load of whiskey. I ain't got nothing against you, Marshal. I come to town, heard all that talk, and thought I could make a name for myself if I'd done the shooting. Ain't no more to it than that. No more to it than that. Never mind, Doc. You know something I believe you, Swan? You, you do? Well, it's true. Honest, it is. Sure, it's true. And there are a lot of other drunken, brainless bums going to try it for the same reason. They heard somebody's out to murder me, and they got to thinking, why shouldn't they do it and get that credit for themselves? Now, Matt, it's not that bad. It's already started, Doc. And there'll be others, lots of them. As long as I last. Little do you know about the little white tablet in the little green pocket roll? Just a waiting for the moment when you need them to bring your acid indigestion under control. Come, are the little white tablets in the little green pocket roll. Come for the tummy. Oh, 
them handy in the pocket row. Keep your tummy under tummy control. Always keep tums by your bed. Don't let acid indigestion spoil your sleep. Nothing but tums works so fast to make you feel so good so long. Get C-U-M-S, Tums, 10 cents. Three-roll pack a quarter. Or get the new Tums six-roll pack with free metal carrier, only 49 cents. Chester and I rode Matt Swan down to the Arkansas and told him to get his horse across and keep going. I guess he thought I was about to shoot him the way he rode off, all hunkered up in the saddle, trying to look small. I was pretty sure he'd never show up and dodge again. That was one less glory hunter to deal with. But the thought of how many were left, waiting in the alleys, hiding in the shadows, that made me jumpy. I didn't realize how bad off I was until we got back to town, rode into the stable. We put our horses into their stalls and we're walking toward the door. This barn is plum deserted tonight, Miss Jones. That was late, Chester. Everybody's either drunk or in bed, but... Well, there's somebody who ain't. What's he doing with that rifle? He's duck into that stall, Chester. He saw us. All right, drop the rifle, mister. Not likely. Drop it, I say. No. He's going to shoot. You got him. Stay back, sister. Don't shoot. Don't shoot again, mister. Pick up his rifle. I got it. Blast you, mister. Put a bullet in my lung. Who are you? I never seen him before. Oh, do you care who I am? You gone kill me. That's what you've done. Why were you after me? Somebody hire you? Now come on, tell me. You shoot a man down, then you try to blame it on him. Mr. Dillon, maybe he wasn't after you. I wasn't after nobody. Just come for my horse. I think he's telling the truth, Mr. Dillon. Dillon? Marshal? Who did you think I was? I heard talk. Somebody was out to shoot you. On me. I was just trying to get home to Texas. I ain't gonna make it now. Whoever that rifle, mister, you, you were about to shoot. Thought I was being held up. Oh, you hollered at me. Mr. Dillon, he ain't got nothing to do with this. Of course I ain't. Was I you, Marshal? But there was talk about somebody after me. I'd find out who was making talk. I wouldn't go around, go around shooting innocent folks. Somebody got you out smart. Well, he'll get you up to docks, mister. He, he'll take care of you. Don't, don't, don't. Don't bury me in no blanket, Marshal. Fix me a box, would you? I promise. Fix me a box? Yeah. I, yeah, I promise. I can't swallow no more. I'm going to drop. Mister... You, if you hadn't. We don't even know his name. No, we'll find him a box. We'll fix him up a real good one. Yes, sir. And I'm going to do something else, he said. What's that? I've been outsmarted. He was right. But I know what I'm doing now. Kitty. 
to somebody. You bet I am. Trouble? No, the trouble's over. It soon will be. A fight? I'd be mighty surprised if there was a fight. Kitty cowards don't carry guns. Ed Eby. Yeah. Here comes the split, gentlemen. Had to bring along. Well, Marshal Dillon, you gonna try your luck? My luck ran out about an hour ago, Evie. What? I shot and killed an innocent man. Why, what are you talking about, Marshal? You were too cheap to hire somebody to get me, Evie, and too much of a coward to try it yourself. I don't like that word. Your story about overhearing that talk out back, you spread it around hoping it would give some brainless fool the idea to try it himself. That's a lie. Well, two men tried it and made me so jumpy I just killed a man I thought was trying it again. And I feel pretty bad about that, Evie. I've got nothing to do with it. Now, you told me the story thinking it would make you look innocent. Well, you outsmarted me, Evie, for a little while. But you can't prove any of I don't have to. Now, come on. You can't arrest me. No, but I'm going to lock you up, and tomorrow I'm going to run you right out of town. No. Two innocent men have died because of your cowardice, baby. I wish I could hang you for it. Call me a coward. You're the worst coward I ever Shut saw. Up. Stop saying it. You're doing just what you did out in Santa Fe. Come on, Evie. I'll show you I'm not a coward. You won't call me that anymore. Take your hand out of your pocket. I got a gun in here. I'll kill you myself. No, you won't. You're not going to draw that. Oh, gun. yes, I am. Not you, Evie. I'll do it. Just keep talking, Evie. Just keep talking. I'll do it. I'll kill you. <laughs> I had a right to. I think he wanted me to, Kitty. What? I think he'd rather be dead than face everybody knowing what a coward he is. And he's got his punishment coming. For the rest of his life. and directed by Norman MacDonald stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Joseph Kearns, Jack Moyles, and Lawrence Sobkin. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week for another story on Gunsmoke.